So a very good evening to you here on Joy 99.7 FM, your superstation channel of blessing and your place of inspiration. Today is Sunday, the 3rd of September, 2023, the very first Sunday of the month of September. And I warmly welcome you to today's edition of a Walk with Jesus right here on 99.7 megahertz, Joy FM. My name is Atuakwa, ably supported by Wolf Production, by Mikaela Nye and Kojoe Champong. We're live on Facebook, we're live on YouTube. Kindly do well to connect and share the link. Share so that friends and loved ones will also get connected and be blessed. Because there's a lot of learning to do this very evening. So get on our Facebook page, Joy997. Get on my YouTube page. Connect. Share the link. So friends and loved ones will also get connected and be blessed. Once again, you're warmly welcome. Tonight, our discussion focuses on ethical leadership and national transformation. Ethical leadership and national transformation. In the book of Proverbs chapter 21, the verse 3. Proverbs 21 and the verse 3. It says, To do what is right is just, and, and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. I'll read it again. Proverbs 21 and the verse 3. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Are you a leader in any jurisdiction, be it church, family, schoolwork, uh, constituency, a leader in this nation, a leader, you know, as far as the continent is concerned, a global leader? Are you a leader in any right? Well, the discussion tonight concerns you and concerns me. I'm happy to announce to you that uh, we're going to be discussing that which concerns uh, our advancement, that which concerns how we're going to do well in our capacity as leaders and fulfill what God has destined us to fulfill. So as you join us, we delve deep into what ethical leadership is, why it's important to practice it, the correlation uh, between ethical leadership and national transformation, and whether we even have such leaders especially in our country uh, in these days. Your question and contributions are welcome via WhatsApp. The number is 55 That's 55 And on the Joy FM Facebook page as well, you have uh, the opportunity to get interactive with us, asking us the question you want to ask and uh, uh, contributing to the discussion. Once again, I warmly welcome you. This is a walk with Jesus and I'm going to be, um, we're going to be taking a musical break and after the break, I'll be introducing my resourceful guest right here in the studios of 99.7 FM. You're welcome. This is a walk with Jesus. Enjoy this. Yes, God is good. Yes, man, yes, he is good. Yeah, and just want to thank you so much for doing it, yeah? 
Uh, so you're welcome back. It's a walk with Jesus right here on Joy 99.7 FM. You heard uh, a rendition of the song, in fact, a cover version of the song Goodness of God uh, coming from the ministry of Christopher Martin, uh, bringing us uh, to uh, this very moment here on A Walk with Jesus. That's 11 minutes after the hour of nine and uh, i have two great giants with me uh, in the studio uh, tonight i have with me uh, right here in the studios the new chairman of the christian council of ghana and uh, he is in the person of the right reverend dr hilliard dogbe uh, dr dogbe is the new chairman of the christian council he's also the presiding bishop of the african methodist episcopal zion church that's ame zion uh, with us right here in the studios of uh, Joy 99.7 FM. I'd want to say a very good evening to you, sir. Good evening. How are you doing? 
By his grace, we're doing great. Eh? We thank Jesus for grace and would want to uh, congratulate you for uh, your new feat as far as uh, leadership is concerned and leadership in the body of Christ as well. Congrats, sir. Thank you very much. Right. And I also have with me here in the studios, uh, Reverend Dr. Cyril Fiosi. Dr. Fiosi is the General Secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana. Dr. Fiosi, a very good evening to you. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Right. It's, it's been a while. Ah, been by a grace. While. By grace. While, yeah. By grace. I hope uh, church is fine. Everything is fine. Yes. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Right then. Let, let me begin uh, with uh, Dr. Dogby uh, regarding um, the, 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 the subject. And even before we get into, into, into it, you, you were elected into office uh, uh, four months ago, I should say. Yeah, yeah about four, months, four months ago. How has it been so far? Four months into... <laughs> the chairmanship. <laughs> well, it's been good, I would say. Uh, you know, I'm not new to the Christian Council. Yeah. Uh, I've been a member of the Christian Council since my election as a head of church, and I've been a member of the executive committee. So uh, I'm not new to the council. So, uh, but what we've been trying to do is to reorientate ourselves to what our core mandates and responsibilities are as a council, mm. even as we try to move ahead with our collaborations and, mm. uh, and be a bit more strategic with that and be more engaging with that mm. uh, and also come up with programs and activities that will seek to be of uh, benefit and empower our leaders and also benefit our general membership mm. of the council. So. Having a general secretary like Dr. Fayo, sir, we we've been working together to make right. sure that we right. we push right. ahead. Right, right. So, congrats once again Thank on you. on my very own behalf and uh, on the behalf of the Christian Department of Multimedia and the whole of multimedia. Mm. We congratulate you. Thank you. Right. Well, um, ethical leadership and national mm. transformation. I, I, would, I would want us to begin by um, helping us understand the salient words, you know, in, in, in the theme mm. uh, uh, of, of our discussion mm. tonight. Um, let's look at leadership, mm. first of all. Mm. Uh, many a time, we tend to think that uh, when we talk about leadership, it, it has to do with one who's guarded a group of people and... Um, uh, probably is is the superior mm. or is, is is the head head of of of, of them all is, is that all leadership is about or leadership goes beyond that uh, you know you're so right and uh, there have been so many definitions of leadership out there uh, but leadership essentially wants ability and capacity to create influence okay in other words you can gather people together but if you're not able to influence the people positively and in a particular direction positively, then you are not providing leadership. I see. <laughs> you know, you could have a position of power, but if your position of power or your position of authority is not influencing uh, your followers in a particular direction, you are not providing leadership. So what makes one a leader is the ability to actually influence and in this in this in this in right positively. positively. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. Dr. Ferris, your thought, your thought on, 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 on what uh, the definition of leadership is in our context? I completely agree with my um, chairman. Mm. And I must say that he was also vice chairman for some time. I see. Of the Christian Council. Yes, know. yes. So yes. he has been a leader mm. through and through mm. as leader of his church and leader of the Christian Council mm. and now chairman of the Christian Council of Ghana. Um... A leader is not the boss. Mm. So in Ghana, we always say, you are the boss, you are the boss. Yeah. Bossing people around is not leadership. What, what's the difference? Leadership is um, serving people in the right direction. So I want to make a distinction between being a servant leader 
and then being a bossy leader. So there are all kinds of leadership. Uh, but you are not being a boss here. You are being a servant. I see. So that is the angle I'll add to it. Right, yeah. right, right. And 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 one one other word <clears throat> that stands out is 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 the subject of ethics, <laughs> ethical leadership. Um, what do we mean by by being ethical as far as leadership is concerned, Doctor Dugby? Uh, thank you. You know, as Doctor Faris has said, there are many definitions of leadership, and there are many types of leadership. Uh, you have the servant leadership, you have the transformational leader, you have the transactional leader. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about ethical leadership, we are talking about leadership that upholds values and beliefs. Mm -hmm. And its emphasis and focus is on the right, the human rights of the other. In other words, ethical leadership aims at making sure that there is trust there is uh, uh, community building, there is uh, 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 integrity, and all of this are being put across as a way of uh, respecting and, uh, 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 and, and building up the other. So ethical leadership is not just influencing people positively, but it's also empowering and building up the people mm. in the right way. So they also can intend mm. to build up others right. by upholding the patriarchy, the proper values and right. beliefs. Right. We're going to be talking about the conference that's up, uh, that's that's coming coming up pretty soon, uh, which also has the same theme: ethical leadership and and national transformation. But then I'd want to find out why this and why now. Uh, thank you, Pastor. To you know, after I was elected, I was actually not in a country where my colleagues elected me at the AG. And oh, I see. I was in a capacity building workshop in a, in Nairobi, Kenya. And once the announcement came forth, uh, it was a conference on leadership. And uh, they took part in a program that was on ethical investment. And around the same time, everybody kept calling and texting. and <laughs> uh, We are praying for you. And, uh, so I was engaging Dr. Fire. I said, what has become so scary about Christian cults? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you, you, you have to be called to be told we're praying for you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and the way people were saying it, it mm. was with a tinge of some kind of fear mm. as to uh, this position kind of scary. And, uh, but I realized that of late, we've been in the news, Christian Cancer has been in the news, not for what we are doing, but actually for our response to issues that uh, people in political leadership will make statements and cause some problems and then uh, the church will be asked to respond. But we put our heads together and we say, is that really what we're supposed to be doing as a council? Well, our responsibility as a council is uh, apart from building the community of churches together, it's also to empower our people. So we thought about this conference. Uh, I mean, the last time Christian Council did something like this, according to the record, was in 1949, pre-independence. Mm. You know, so we thought about doing a program that will help us to empower not only just church leaders, but leaders also in the public space, all leaders in the public space. So church leaders, political leaders, uh, labor union, judiciary, you know, so we, we can reach out to them and let them know that what's from our Christian perspective, mm. this is what God requires of us as mm. leaders. Mm. And you know, you can only expect what you inspect. And mm. if you don't empower people, you cannot really expect them to assume, you can only assume that they know what they are doing. Mm. So our goal is actually just to reach out to the people, mm. the church leaders and uh, all leaders in the public space. Mm about ethical leadership mm. which fosters integrity trust respect for human rights and values human dignity you know how do we do all of this and how do we how do we also carry ourselves in the midst of the turbulence mm. so we just had to pull this together so that we can just mm. uh, uh, that's our primary goal actually right, right. On, the, on the back of that Dr. Dogwe I would, I would want to find out sincerely mm. you know um, assessing how far we've, we've come as 
as the nation you know in relation to the body of christ mm -hmm. in the light in the light of leadership mm -hmm. would you say that uh, as far as leadership is concerned we've we've done uh, a yeoman's job you know or <laughs> there is a lot you know to to do and and i mean after you've answered that i'll i'll, I'll follow up <laughs> with my <laughs> well i will say that uh, as a teacher uh there's more room for improvement because on the scale of one to hundred how would you assess leadership in the country vis-a-vis -vis, um, the body you know, of to, christ to, to just put vis-a-vis -vis the body of christ i will say i would not want to go into the scaling Primarily because I don't like putting such matters into boxes as if there is some specific way of doing it. But from the perspective of ethical leadership, I think we have a lot to do. Because uh, we've tend to, we've had some excesses from the church as well. Uh, you know, let's be honest with ourselves. We have some excesses from the church so that it's not just about the people in the political, uh, party political space, mm. you know. Obviously, you also see when I say SSS from the church, you see SSS from the church also aligning to some of those positions, mm. and that makes it difficult to speak truth to power. Mm. And the most appropriate way to speak truth to power is to uphold your own integrity, and you can say, "Damn the consequences." I've got to say it as it is. But when you cannot say, "Damn the consequences," and you cannot speak truth to power then you are shaking your responsibilities as a church leader. Hmm. Yes, the church has been loud. The voice of the church has been loud in many instances. Hmm. There are so many instances, many national issues, many engagements with political leadership. But the intervention of the church has been profound. It has been profound. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, in our individual spaces, hmm. you know, we've made a collective, we've written the collective letters. But to what extent are we able to hold uh, uh, other people in other areas of leadership accountable mm. to the very things, the very uh, uh, contracts that we signed, I would say. Mm. So there's work to do. Mm. I mean, we, we cannot shake, run away from that. Mm. We've done, the church has been very loud in many instances, mm. you know. Uh, you can talk about the Galance issues, you can talk about corruption. For many years, Christian Council, Christian Home Week, the emphasis was on bribery and corruption. Mm. You know, publications have been published. Write-ups have been done, pastoral letters have been written, but to what extent are we holding the people accountable? Mm. You know, mm. and I think to hold the people accountable, we also need to hold ourselves accountable. Wow. And as leaders of the church, once we are able to hold ourselves accountable, mm. then we can be able to hold other people accountable mm. in their mm. spaces. Mm. No, Dr. Farisi, um, do, you, do you agree to the, the, the submission of, 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 of Dr. Dilby? Yes, I do. I do agree. And, and I think I think um, Dr. Dogbe was a bit reluctant to <laughs> to grade to grade our work, yeah. but I think we have done pretty well. Uh, I will go on the scale of one to hundred. We will be in the sixties to the seventies. That's average. Yeah, I mean, there's room for improvement. There's work to be done. And let me give you an example. It's not just the, the, the purpose of this conference is not just targeting the leadership mm -hmm. at the national level, but it's targeting also the leadership of the churches mm -hmm. and people in the public space at the local local level as well. And let me give you one example. Every, every election period, the politicians come to our churches yeah. and speak to us <coughs> and make promises and tell us their plans and what they are going to do. Mm. Four years down the line, they come back when it's time for election again. And one, they have not done what they said they were going to do. Mm. They have not fulfilled their promises. Mm. And we don't question them. We don't say anything about them. That is ethical leadership. One of the words that chairman used was integrity. Integrity is when you say you are going to do something. A promise is as good as a debt. When you so, say you are so, going to do yeah. something, you mm. do it. So. When they come to our churches as a, a congregational leader, a we parish should hold pastor, them accountable. yes, we should question them. But because they give us some fat envelopes, sometimes we gloss over that. So we are trying to remind ourselves to do the right thing, hmm. because we are also not doing the right thing if we don't hold them to account. 
You said we're going to fix this road. Have you done it? Have you done it? Four years down the line, they come back to us. And the, the pastor has this soft power to hold that local politician, not the president, the local politician to account. And say, the last time you and promised us... By local us politician, the, you mean the assemblyman, the, assembly the MP, man, the, the, MP, the MC, DC, DC. MC. Yes. We should hold them to us. And that is what we are trying to kind of whip up mm. in all of us mm. as leaders and citizens of this country. That will lead to national transformation. Doctor, Doctor why do you think that um, ov over the years we've not been able to cultivate this, this, this culture, um, thereby leading us to where, where we are now? That it's now that we are gaining an, an awakening, so to speak. Uh, I, I, will, I will not say over the years we've not cultivated. I will say that our cultivation has, on the one hand, been slow, mm -hmm. and on another hand, it's like we take three steps forward and we take one step backwards. Mm. And I do think that uh, that's where the challenge is. One of the elements that we can say accounts for this is selfishness and greed. Mm. You know, even in the body of Christ, even within the body of Christ, <laughs> in the name of Mama's leave. Uh, <laughs> that's why I said I will not shake away from affirming or asserting that there's an excess within the church. I mean, there are so many instances where you have church leaders in the news for all the bad reasons and all the unpopular reasons were unpopular. Sometimes you can do the right thing and be unpopular for that. Mm. You know, like somebody said, anointing does two things. It draws people to you and draws people away from mm. you. You know, so you can be in the news for the unpopular reasons, but the fact of the matter is that I think that if we can all look at the collective good, and that's what ethics drives us to do, the collective good instead of individual accomplishments. Mm. If we can all aim at that and everybody in leadership knowing that I'm providing this service for the collective good, mm. irrespective of what the personal gains are, mm. I believe that that will guide us towards the right destination that we've all been striving to do. Okay. But if we are driving at this collective good and yet in the midst of that, our self aggrandizement, our self just trumps over everything else. Obviously, we're going to shake the responsibility of that we, that's our expected of us. Mm. We're going to shake uh, our duty mm. uh, of service to the community and to upholding the public mm. and uh, upholding human life and dignity. Right. right. In, in terms of ethics, I would want us to climb up, you know, uh, from the various levels of, of leadership from from personal to national you know um on on the personal level as far as ethics is concerned i'm listening to dr Dobie, i'm listening to dr fire say i'm a christian uh, uh leader on a personal level as far as ethics is is concerned um i'm sitting at your feet now what am i to know what what are you to draw my mind to so I can be an effective leader, you know, on, on the personal level as a, as a Christian leader? Well, thank you. You know, ethics has to do with standards mm. so that uh, I know as a journalist or even as a staff of multimedia, there are some ethics of this profession that you're supposed to be a hold. Yeah. So ethics has to do with standards of a group of people that are upheld mm. to be able to maintain the dignity of that group. So that when we're talking about ethics in the, within this context of leadership in the church and in the national space and all of that, so we're talking about the standards that we ought to uphold. Mm -hmm. And those are standards of respect, standards of integrity, standards of uh, uh, community building, mm. standards that will enhance the dignity and the well-being of the other. Mm. And that's are very critical. Mm. You know, not standards that will seek to bring another down, not mm. standards that will seek to promote the self against the other, not standards that will seek to uh, destroy the other or denigrate the other, mm. but standards that will seek to build community mm. and to build the other up. Mm. As so as a person, it. as a person, I, I would have to um, I have standards, principles that I live by, and as long as I uphold them, it will have a rippling effect and on on my on my it, leadership. It, to move it further, as people of faith, mm. our standards are set in scripture. Mm. 
I mean, what does the law require of you? As Micah writes, said to do justly, to, you know, show mercy, and to walk right and humbly mm -hmm. with your God. Mm -hmm. You know, justice is not about just drawing people to the law cause, but mm -hmm. living just means walking in way that makes me justified as a Christian. Mm -hmm. That somebody can see me and see that my actions, my words, my attitude are reflective mm -hmm. of the Christ that I proclaim or the Christ that I profess. Mm -hmm. And that's justice. Mm -hmm. Showing mercy, showing love and kindness towards the other. Mm -hmm. You know, seeking the well-being of the other, you know, that's showing mercy mm. and walking humbly with our God, walking according to His ways mm. and allowing His power and His principles mm. to guide me mm. in my path. I see. Obviously, mm. those are the personal, ethical principles mm. that we need to uphold. And right they're all then. set in Scripture. Right then. Uh, I will climb up from personal then. Mm. I mean, uh, I'm a Christian. Uh, I work. You know, mm -hmm. I mean the media. I mean uh, the banking sector. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, I mean the corporate corporate, corporate mm -hmm. sector. Uh, how am I to express this in my in my working space mm -hmm. to to influence that immediate society, Dr. Mm -hmm. Farsi? Thank you very much, Pastor. Too. When we talk about ethics, um, two things come to mind. One is beneficence doing things for the benefit of the people you serve looking beyond self looking beyond self so when you are given a position of leadership it is not meant to benefit you it is meant to benefit the people you are serving <laughs> we shouldn't do stomach leadership mm. but that's what we see in society today and so we should not do it that's what we are saying <laughs> <laughs> that, that's one of the basic problems with christianity in uh, the southern hemisphere ghana for example you know christianity the global center of christianity has shifted from the northern hemisphere to the southern, to the southern yes and so the color of christianity will be determined by how we live it mm. or how we how we uh, uh, prosecute christianity so what is what is happening is that if we don't do that well there'll be a problem and what is we are seeing is that we are Christians on weekends, but on weekdays, it's like we are not Christians. Something else. Our Christian life is not impacting our public life. Who, who will you blame, the pulpit or the pews for this? Um, uh, is, is discipleship not uh, being effective enough? Are uh, the shepherds not really shepherding well? Why do we have that situation? Um, that's a, a very complex uh, question <laughs> and i don't want to prefer simple solutions to it mm. but uh, wh one of the things in christianity that's this is my personal observation is we have a lot of grace you know you go to some other religions where there is instant sort of justice, justice. or retribution mm. people tend to behave well but that is not happening in christianity that may be one of the reasons why we have this situation where people christianity there's growth in christianity there's proliferation of churches and a lot of people say they are christian but then their way of life is completely different but that's a very simple answer to a very complex situation because there are other factors involved mm. okay the other thing that i also wanted to mention about ethics is uh, non morphisms do not do harm to the other person. In today's Ghana, we do not only tend to benefit from our leadership, we, we benefit and also do harm to those that we are to serve. Well, even, in the church, right? even in church leadership, uh, as my chairman has said severally, uh, we have seen a lot of people who are taking advantage of the pew, basically. So uh, we must move, shy, move away from that. We must mm -hmm. shy away from that. So is it the pew or the, or, pulpit. or the pulpit? I think we both have roles to play. And I believe that um, I've heard in some quarters where the, the, pew, the pulpit had been criticized severely for not playing a role. But, but for the church mm. and what the pulpit had done up to this point will not be where we are today. Mm. 
industry. So I think we have made tremendous contribution. But right from the beginning of creation, from scripture, you know, God gave us the rules, mm. the, the boundaries. And human as we are, we kept crossing it. Mm. We kept violating it. So mm. it started from way from Adam's time mm. till now. It will continue that way. But we are still striving very hard to mm. correct it. Mm. To make our Christianity deep. So you mentioned being a banker, we must our Christianity must be manifest in our work in the public space. Mm. So how do we do that? It's a question for all of us to really continue to grapple with, mm. both as pew and as pulpit. Right. Mm. I, I'll, I'll throw the same question to you, <laughs> but in quite a different light, uh, D- Dr. Dobe. Mm. How, as shepherds, you know, are we to um, prepare our sheep, you know, to, to go out there and express this that we are talking about out there because it seems to me that um we talk a lot about uh being christians but we haven't been able to really impact society impact generation uh, uh, generations with our christianity um as we ought to and 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 that is the reason why we we are here today um what do you say about that? Uh, thank you. You know, <laughs> uh, when you ask a question about discipleship, it's the same to yes. you as in a different way. Mm. I think that's where we have a lot of work to do. If you look at our ecclesial space today, the focus has been so much on membership than making disciples. Because that's that's what is described as success in ministry. I mean, <laughs> the crowd you command is what tells how successful you are. And, and that's where we are losing it. That's where we are losing it. So we have the crowds, but we don't have disciples of Christ in the crowds. We command the crowd, we command the numbers, we speak to the numbers. We speak what the people even want to hear to attract them. We make sure that we share messages that will make the people excited. But are we really teaching the people how to be faithful disciples? Are we really giving them the tools and the resources they need to know that look, when I am at the office and I do the right thing, I'm going to have a lot of backlash from colleagues mm. and friends. Mm. You know, somebody was sharing with me that I, she got to a new office and then uh, as she was trying to do the right thing. Somebody said, well, if you continue doing this, you will not last you here. Not last. And so mm. too, she didn't last. Mm. You know, so you look at, these are the, how do we empower the people that in those spaces, mm. they are able to apply their principles of faithfulness, honesty, trust, all of that in the space. And I think that that is how we got to make our disciples, how we got to... So I wouldn't say that it's uh, the pew above the pulpit or the pulpit the above the... No, no, I wouldn't say that. I think it's just a shared responsibility. Mm. You know, when there's good teaching, there should be good learning. Mm. Uh, the teacher should ensure that impact the right knowledge to the student. And then the learner should also make sure that they're able to grasp and live out mm. uh, uh, what he or she is being taught. So I think that one of the fundamental problems uh, about church leadership today is that we are shifting mm. from the biblical mandate of making disciples mm. to just having membership. Mm. And you are right. If we are, success is being defined by, uh, 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 the, number of by the number of people we are able to draw. Mm. If we draw the number, how do we empower them with the word? Mm. Is it just about uh, preaching prosperity? Uh, is it just about uh, just telling them that, look, your, even your faith? I think that's what it has even come to. That people's success in life is not become the standard for defining their faith. Mm. Mm. You know, so that mm. as a person of faith, as a Christian, when things don't go well with you, with your, your faith work... Is proven by what you, are, you have been able to acquire materially. But why should it be materially? That's not what we are taught in Scripture. Mm-hmm. Right? It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, 
and all other things will be, added. will be added unto you. I think that when we empower the people in that way, then people will be able to walk in integrity. Mm. People will be able to walk faithfully. Mm. You know, even when you read uh, Habakkuk, you know, said so the just shall live by faith. Mm. The word faith there is actually faithfulness. Mm. So the just shall live by their faithfulness. Mm. So in other words, to be justified, it should be proven by my faithfulness. Mm. So faithfulness in word and faithfulness in deed. Mm. It's not one-sided and it's not lopsided either. Mm. It's always very important yeah. that if we are teaching the people the rights and we need to encourage them, we ought to let them also know that look, following the masses, the masses that's not it's not always right. Mm. You know, we have this saying the voice of the people is the voice of God, but the voice of the popular, the popular voice is not always the voice of God. Mm. And it's always important that we help our people. Mm. I keep using the word empowerment. Mm. And I keep hammering on that word because I think essentially that's what we are called to do. Right. When we empower people with the word, then they will be able to live it out. Mm. And we also hold them accountable. Right. You right. Know. right. Somebody would say that uh, it's the same members that we raise in in uh, our churches that rise up into national leadership so we're, we're coming to national uh, the national level here is the same people that rise up into into national leadership i am very sure that if you are to do a census in the parliament of ghana um the number of christians professing christians in 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 the parliament uh, will outnumber the other religions mm -hmm. uh, if you if you go into the judiciary uh, you will you will see the same thing get into the executive mm -hmm. you will you will see the same thing um, yet we have issues and it looks like uh, we we keep going down you know the the ladder rather than mm -hmm. climb climbing up so there are those who are blaming Christianity Mm. for for where we are today um your leaders in christian council first of all dr dogbe mm. what is the role of the christian council as far as national leadership in this country is is concerned thank you uh in 2015 or 2016 there about mm. i spoke at the bar association matters day mm. And I recall clearly one of the things I said was that, just to affirm what you're saying, first of all, is that census tells us that 70% of the Ghanaian population are Christians. Mm. And uh, like you said, many of the people occupying leadership, political leadership, and national leaders are professing Christians. And we all are saying that, that there's so much corruption. Mm. So even if you want to use percentage, you mean that seventy percent of the people involved in corruption are Christians, mm. are professing, self-professing Christians, more or less. But I do believe that first of all, that's what why Christian Council is organizing this program. Okay. Is it because? We realize that as a council, we've not directly shared with people. We do political programs uh, during the political year, election year particularly. We organize uh, uh, education programs and all of that. But this time we want to talk to not just our members, but mm. our leaders as well. Mm. Before way before we go into the election year and all of his related matter, mm -hmm. so people know what the seventy percent Christians mm -hmm. are expecting of them mm -hmm. within the church and outside the church. People know what we will hold them accountable for, mm -hmm. and people know that this is what we are telling you. This is why we are telling you that look, the right way to lead mm -hmm. in this country. Like I mentioned, the 1947 program. Yes. I was going somewhere with that. You know, the team was on uh, one of the key elements of that program was on Christianity and, gov <coughs> and government. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And the essential message of the leadership of the Christian at that time is that there's a difference between government and governance. Okay. And they were trying to promote good governance. And good governance within our context, as we are saying now, is ethical leadership. Mm. Right? So you can talk about good government, good government, but if the government is not reflecting in their governance, then there is something wrong. And the governance is the act, act of leadership. That is, so to be ethical means that you are being placed there for a responsibility. Mm. Stay focused on that responsibility. Do that responsibility faithfully mm. and stand firm, irrespective of how contrary the, wind, the negative winds will be against you. And once you're able to uphold that, I believe that the people in leadership, the people who are seeking political office, also know what the general population is also expecting of them. Mm. I believe that you know, will get, will mm. make more progress mm. and will probably mm. get there faster. Well, Dr. Ferris, somebody would say that, well, the system that has been created over the years does not make it conducive for, for, for the Christian to express true Christian values, you know. Um, would you agree with that assertion? I do agree with that assertion, that it's... Um, it's almost... Uh, but is that an excuse? No, it's not an excuse. Because to be a true Christian, a Christian who holds his or her Christian values highly, as my chairman said earlier on, I mean, you may not last at certain places. Mm. You may not be able to make it through the system mm. to become president. But having, Which, having it, said that... Mm-hmm we must find a way to encourage people who are upright who have solid christian values to be able to go through the system Mm. and how we do that is what we all have to continue to think about because the 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 structure has been so uh monetized Mm. i know you know what i I mean by that it has been so monetized (laughs) from the local level the way so that Mm. if you're not able to buy your way through so you must have some some financiers behind you if you are going to make it through. Uh, the problem with that is that after you come to power, you have to pay them back. Mm. And that in, in itself corrupts anyone. Is it possible to change? It's possible to change if the church makes, the church for instance, or you are talking about the Christian council, makes a conscious effort to support our, our political uh activists mm. people who want to go into politics who want to be mps dcs mcs and so on uh to support them and to help them through the process mm. then then we can do that that is possible I see. but at this point we, have, we haven't got to the point where we are ready to support them mm. through the process so they are on their own mm. and then when they come to power we expect them to do the right thing it becomes very difficult at that stage I see. Right thing. Because but then, those who have funded them exactly definitely would would expect mm-hmm. that they they reap what they have invested exactly. invested into them and, and they are moved to I mean mm-hmm. <laughs> break rules yeah. and be unethical. Exactly. You know. uh, well, uh, uh, Dr. Digbe, I, I was just asking Dr. <laughs> Fire, say, uh, is 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 can can that change? And he's saying, well, that 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 can change. Looking looking at on the on the grounds, I mean, since, sincerely, do you see us uh, being able to overcome that, especially with the issue of corruption? You know, uh, thank you, but uh, I wouldn't say that the system allows people to I wouldn't say that the system uh, is such that it's what makes people so mm. because people operate a system mm-hmm. uh, and in operating the system they can be firm mm. if all Christians like you we said a few minutes ago, if all Christians uphold their Christian principles, whatever they find themselves in, being as leaders or as followers, the system will change. Mm. 
even in our daily lives, uh, in scripture, we know sometimes uh, you encounter some storms. Mm. Sometimes the winds are contrary. Mm. You don't have always the winds blowing in your favor. Mm. When the winds are contrary, what do you do? Mm. You find ways and means to live above the winds. Mm. That is where people feel that, well, once the winds have gone contrary, mm -hmm. And I need to be corrupt to be able to stay above the wind. Then they throw away the Christian principle. They mm. throw away the same value that they were upholding prior to the winds. Mm. Because they see people who are not doing the principles prospering yeah. and in all their ways. Then we leave our values and we shift. But if we all can say that, well, like Habakkuk, I'll raise my questions to God. Mm. Why is the wicked being successful mm. and me trying to uphold all righteousness having all these issues lord i need answers and what was habakkuk what did he respond to habakkuk he said the vision is for an appointed, appointed time. time so yes i may be struggling today when everybody is making but if i recognize that look i just continue to stand for the truth there's no way darkness overcome light mm. one day my success will also be defined mm. by what the people you know, expect of me. And right. I think it's very critical mm. that we know that, yes, we have values, we have beliefs. Mm. We need to stand on that mm. irrespective of the consequences. Right. But if we allow ourselves to be assessed by the worldly standards, mm. to be assessed by the way all those people doing the wrong thing are being assessed, mm. then obviously we're going to throw away all of our values, going sure. to throw away all of our standards, mm. going to throw away all of our beliefs and start behaving like everybody else. Right. And sadly, on Sunday morning, the same people will come to church mm. on Harvest Big the Five donation and we applaud them beyond. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. The Lord help us. I'm very sure that you, you, you have learned uh, so far and, and you've been challenged, you know, to uphold your values as as a child of god wherever you find yourself on the 19th as we wrap up mm -hmm. i want us to talk about the 19th on the 19th of uh, uh this very month at the beniza presby church hall mm -hmm. uh, there's a leadership conference coming yes. off uh, dr fire please mm -hmm. throw light on it for us yes so <laughs> to be able to counter some of the issues that you have raised that we have all discussed here we and to be proactive mm. not to react when a, a situation arises mm. we um, are organizing this conference to what's the word to train and also sensitize sensitize, sensitize uh, create awareness among many church leaders and other leaders as mm. well on how to be ethical leaders how to be persons of integrity and honesty so that it can lead to national transformation. Mm. So the theme is ethical leadership and national mm. transformation. Interesting. It's, it's on the 19th of mm. September. It's a day's program. Mm. It's from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Okay. Yes. Right. And, and let yes. me add yes, quickly please. that... Mm. Uh, even as much as the team is on ethical leadership and national transformation, we are mm -hmm. also very conscious of the tensions between the Christian faith and politics. Yeah. So the other topic that will be discussed is also the church and state relations mm -hmm. and how we could uh, enhance that mm -hmm. and enhance that positively. Mm -hmm. And also there will be a panel discussion on how the Christian mm -hmm. should be to, to carry himself or herself mm. as an ethical leader mm. uh, in national politics. Mm. I see. Yeah. Who, who is to come for, for this conference, Dr. Dobby? Uh, we said primarily leaders in the public space, so mm. church leaders, uh, big congregational leaders or district leaders, church leaders at every level mm. of leadership from the congregation right to the top. Mm. So you could even be a lay leader within your congregation. Mm. You're also invited to this. You could be a choir leader. Mm. So people in leadership at every level within a church. And we're also inviting other leaders in the public space, from mm. the judiciary, from the legislature, from the media, mm. even from the labor 
unions. Mm. Uh, we're inviting all those who are playing leadership responsibilities, all those areas also. And we sent our letters to all of them. Right. Well, well, let me, let yes. me also add quickly that we are doing this in partnership with all African Council of Churches. Okay. And our main speaker will be Dr. Ezekiel, Reverend Dr. Ezekiel Esmori, who is the director of programs at AACC. Mm. And he will be the keynote speaker. All right. And then Reverend Dr. Uh, Reverend Professor, most Reverend Professor Asante, mm. Emmanuel Asante, is going to be there as will well. be the other speaker. And then the panel discussion, we also have uh, uh, Professor Azuma, um, Gifty Afegin Dazi, Honorable Gifty Afegin Dazi. Uh, we, we are hoping that Professor Michael Quay will be able to be make it. Yes. And then uh, uh, Bishop, Right Reverend Dr. George Nikwe, okay, will also right. be there right. for the panel discussion. Right, yeah. right, right. So uh, it's it's an experience you can't afford to miss if mm. if if you are a leader in mm. any level, you know, and and if you're a Christian leader, right? Mm. Then I would want to take your closing comments, uh, Doctor Debe. And well, uh, we uh, ethical leadership is very critical. It's very essential. Mm. Uh, because it involves all the other aspects of leadership mm. and it seeks to empower not just the leader but empower the leader to be able to empower others mm. uh, and that's very very important and uh, i wouldn't want to close without acknowledging some of the people who have made this program uh, by way of sponsorship to make it successful and for us to hold it for free mm -hmm. uh, cbg bank is one uh, enterprise life is one Joy FM is one, mm -hmm. uh, multimedia is one, City is also one, mm -hmm. uh, and several other people mm -hmm. to, for Downwell, us to be able to Downwell do it insurance. for Downwell Insurance, mm -hmm. uh, just to make it uh, mm -hmm. uh, a success. Right then. Mm -hmm. I want to say a very big thank you to you, great man of God. Mm -hmm. uh, God richly bless you, mm -hmm. and uh, may the Lord continue to empower you and grant you great grace as you empower the body of Christ mm -hmm. uh, for us to uh, enforce the dominion mandate. All of this culminates into uh, the original intent of God being yes, established. Right. And, uh, thank you mm -hmm. very much. Mm -hmm. God richly bless you. Amen. Thank you and blessings to you also. Right. Yeah. You. right. So my guests uh, tonight on A Walk With Jesus have been right Reverend Dr. Hilliard Dogwe. He's the new chairman of the Christian Council and presiding bishop of AME Zion Church as well as the General Secretary of the Christian Council, Dr. Cyril Fiosi. This is where we wrap up uh, on today's edition of A Walk With Jesus. My name is Atuakwa. Up next is Jazz on Joy with Uncle Ken. I would want to say a very good evening uh, to you, Uncle Ken. Good evening.